Hey, doers, my name is Jose Ignacio. Now, payday is probably the most exciting day for employees. I mean, it happens to be the case for me. And as a payroll officer, I need to make sure that payday goes smoothly. That means ensuring all errors are fixed and no problems occur when processing my payroll. Payroll issues can lead to inaccurate checks and incorrect financial reports, which can result in a ton of legal ramifications. And those are the worst kind of ramifications, right next to food-related ones. Anyways, bottom line, my department has to make sure that there are no problems when paying our employees. That's why here at Stealthy Wood, we use Odoo's payroll app to streamline the payroll process. And since Odoo clearly points out any issues to our team on the dashboard, we can rest assured that we'll never miss a payroll problem. But I'm going to say it, enough chit-chat. Let's see how this works, shall we? All right, so here's an app you haven't seen before. Trust me, I know. Welcome to our payroll dashboard, o doers. So, let me show you around. So over here on the right, we have an area where I can share notes with my colleagues. And if I ever need to create a new note, I just gotta click on this little plus icon in the top right corner. But, more on that later. So, over here in the center we have the batches card. And this displays the most recent payslip batches and their status. I can see which batches have been paid, and what still needs to be processed as well, just from this little quick bird's eye view. So down over here in the employee trends area, I get a visual overview of our new hires by month or year by clicking on, if I wanted to, the annual or monthly toggle switch right there. Now that is identical over here to our employer cost as well. That's pretty handy. Now those dashboard elements are cool and all, but the most important part is actually up here, warnings. The warning section itself. Now this section highlights any issues that could prevent pay slips from being generated. And since we need to process our payroll this week, I think I should take care of this list right now. So let's actually take a look at these two warnings that we have over here dealing with contracts. So let's kick things off by taking a look at, in our case, new contracts. So inside of here, it takes us to a new list, and this shows us who has a new contract. And it happens to be Mark Demo. Let's take a closer look, so let's go right on in there. Okay. So there's the problem. I just noticed what it is. Until Mark's contract is inside of the running stage, I won't be able to generate payslips for him. And I know his new contract is signed and everything is in order, so let's fix that by moving the contract to the correct stage by actually just doing what I'm already hovering. We're gonna click on the word running. Now, let's go on back over to that warnings list again on the dashboard by using our breadcrumb link, which today happens to be Gluten-free bread, more on that on another day. As you can see now, it's been removed from the warnings list completely. And isn't that great? Okay, almost broke a camera there, so let's move forward. We have more warnings to take care of, so let's go with our identification number one. Ooh, it looks like in our case, Walter doesn't have an identification number. We need this because we print identification numbers on our payslips. While this might not stop us from generating payslips, it is a requirement in some countries, and honestly, it's important to have for our records. So let's fix that. So to do that, I'm going to click on Walter right there. Okay, perfect. Now we need to add these types of things. So it should be noted that identification numbers are stored in the private information tab that we have over here, so let's click on that. And then you want to see this small area down towards the bottom, actually, where it says Citizenship. This is the area where we want to assign it. This can only be accessed inside of the employee's application or inside of payroll as well. So lucky for us, he has a pretty simple ID number, so let's enter it. And YouTube admin, if you're watching, this is a fake thing. It's fake. Please don't take this down. Now let's go back to my payroll dashboard. Once that we hit save manually over here, gluten-free bread once again, boom, look at that. Warning is gone, perfect. Okay, so now we have a bank account issue. We're just going down this whole list. Let's clear that one. It looks like in our case, Roger over here doesn't have a bank account, which means we have nowhere to send his paycheck. Let's fix that. So to do that, we're gonna need to go into Roger's record as well. Great. Okay, now I'm gonna keep noting things. It should also be noted that bank account information is once again, private information. So we're gonna go into this contact section. So from inside of here, we want to make our way to this area right there. Perfect. 
It's the bank account number, which happens to be a whole bunch of ones. All right, great. Now, once we did that, though, as you can tell, we have to create and edit it for a bit. And once again, let's type in that nice bank account number. And for our bank, we're going to say it's the big bank. And then once that that's all done and we're already in set, we make sure the account holder is Roger Scott. And we can't forget to as well as enable and make sure that everything is set up. So once that we've all done all of this, we're already set. So now we have to make sure this green toggle for send money so that it tells us that we verified the bank account and this information is all correct. And that makes me very, very happy, Odoers. So now we can save, close that out. Now that we're back over here to our payroll dashboard, oh, thank God. Look at that. Everything is all gone. So we're actually going to finally finish with all of these final warnings. In our case, we have some time off to defer. So let's go and do that. So time off to defer warnings happen when an employee is already paid for time that counted as a regular workday, but takes time off during the same time period and it was approved. Since they've already been paid for that time off as a regular workday, to keep all of our records correct, we must apply that time off to the next pay period. This usually happens when payroll is processed a few days before the pay period ends, and a worker gets sick unexpectedly on one of those last days, and subsequently they have to take some time off. If everything has been approved and processed, that sick day needs to be applied to the next pay period, instead of canceling checks and reissuing paychecks, which would mean a lot of extra work, which we like to avoid. So, in our case, let's click into Doris Cole over here. It looks like Doris was sick with the flu, so we need to apply this time off to the next pay period. No worries. I'm actually just going to select this record right there. And then I need to defer it to next month. But actually, we're going to do this in a cooler way. We're going to go back over here. We're going to select this little checkbox. We're going to select our actions and defer it to next month. Would you look at that? We're fully done that way. And if we go back to our... Oh my God, would you look at that? Our payroll dashboard. We have no warnings left that would actually prevent our payroll from being unprocessed. And now we can process our payroll. Now, let me tell my manager about all of this hard work. So let's go over here to our notes section. And see, I told you we'd be back over here. We're going to select the plus icon in the top right corner. And it's time for us to start gloating. Now, I can add a title by typing in here where it says right now, in our case, untitled. So let's click on that. Okay, I'm gonna type in manager's warning update. It's always very nice to be very, very forward. So I can add all sorts of useful information and formatting to this note by clicking on, in our case, as you could tell, it tells us our backslash key. So inside of here, I could do things like add images, as you could tell, checklist, tables, everything, and even cooler stuff if we scroll down here to the bottom, such as chat GPT. That can help me to add a ton of content. In fact, let's scroll through that long list all the way again so you could just see how many things you can add. But let's click on chat GPT because I know you're all very curious to see what we do. So I want to tell the managers they can process the payroll now. I know they go into the payroll app almost daily, so I know one of them will see this now. So I'm going to enter something. Tell the managers I took care of all payroll warnings. And what else do we want to tell them? Oh, right. Paychecks can be processed. I mean, we already wrote a whole bunch of stuff, but in our case, let's send this out. And I don't even have to read this. I know it's great. So let's insert this into my note by, in our case, clicking insert right there. And boom, nice banner tells us it's been generated. Now, if I wanted to, I, well, I should add my name down here. But first of all, always edit your chat GPT stuff. You never be, want to be one of those chumps who forgets to do that. Great. Now we are all done with our payroll warnings. And our accounting team knows they can go ahead and pay our team for this month. Okay, folks, that's everything. In this video, we learned how to handle payroll warnings. But stay tuned for our other payroll tutorials, where I'm going to show you how to process payslips and get that cash to your workers. Thanks all for this one, O-Doers. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.